Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about tertiary syphilis. What is syphilis? Syphilis is a sexually transmitted disease caused by a special type of bacteria, the spirochet trypanema pellidum. There are three stages of syphilis, primary syphilis, secondary syphilis, and tertiary syphilis. Primary syphilis is manifested by chancre that develop on the genitalia or in the oral cavity. Secondary syphilis manifested by skin rash including the palm and the sole, lymph adenopathy and condylomata latum that is the area of hypopigmented and pigmented around the genitalia and also around the oral cavity. Tertiary syphilis has three main manifestations. One is cardiovascular syphilis. Second one is neurosyphilis. Number third is the benign tertiary syphilis. So this is the organism like a spring. So it is a spirochet. This is a bacteria, special type of bacteria like a spring. And this is the trypanoma pellidum that causes syphilis. And we are looking at some of the old skulls. So syphilis may cause some gamatous lesion on the skull and it may damage the skull like this way. Okay, many other organs or structures are affected. But in the old museum, we may get some of the skull of old time, time history of syphilis when there was no antibiotics so a lot of organs were affected including the skull so if you go to the cardiovascular syphilis we'll go there there will be aortitis inflammation of the aorta account for more than 80 percent of cases of tertiary syphilis the pathogenesis is not known the scarcity of the organism with intense inflammatory cell like that of plasma cell and lymphocytes suggest possible immune reaction. Aortitis slowly progresses to aneurysm. This is the ascending aorta coming out of the left ventricle. This is the arch of the aorta. This is the descending thoracic aorta. This is the abdominal aorta. So what happened due to aortitis? There will be aneurysm. Aneurysm means abnormal dilatation of the blood vessel of the root this area at the ascending aorta and the arch of the aorta okay so that aneurysm that is the ballooning out of the part of the aorta aortic wall is weaker due to trypanoma pellidema infection okay so there will be dilatation and that may be ruptured that may lead to dissecting aneurysm or it may open directly and we may the life may be ended within a few minutes with the rupture of the aorta this is the major blood vessel of the body okay we'll go to the neurosyphilis we have again three types here meningovascular neurosyphilis paretic neurosyphilis tevis dorsalis they may be mingled together may not be Totally tevis dorsalis, maybe tevis dorsalis with peritic neurosyphilis, we may call it tevis paresis or peritic tevis. Meningovascular neurosyphilis, inflammation of the leptomeninges, that means the pia meter and the arachnoid meter, and obliterative and arteritis with perivascular inflammatory reaction. There may be formation of gamma. Gamma means swelling or a non-healing ulcer in the meninges extending to the brain and parenchyma. Okay. Peretic neurosyphilis, invasion of the brain and anterior column of the spinal cord by trypanoma pellida with progressive cognitive dysfunction, dementia, mood disturbance and paralysis. There is loss of neuron and proliferation of neuroglia. We call it gliosis. How about tapis dorsalis? 
result from damage to the axons of the sensory neurons, not motor neuron. Degeneration of the and demyelination, that is destruction of the myelin around the axons to the posterior column of the spinal cord. Okay, so you got paretic neurosyphilis, meningovascular neurosyphilis, and another variety where the spinal cord posterior column is affected, there is the tabis dorsalis. Okay, we are here in tabis dorsalis. This is sectional spinal cord, especially in the in the lumbar area and lower thoracic lumbar area. The spinal cord will get tabis dorsalis. This is the posterior column. We have the fasciculus gracilis fasciculus cuneatus. We have the function like that of position sense, vibration sense, proprioception that is done by this part. Okay, and in tabis dorsalis, impaired proprioception and vibration sense. There will be sensory or locomotor ataxia. Person cannot work nicely, may fall this side, that side. Loss of pain sensation. Charcoal joint. Charcoal joint usually in the knee or the ankle joint. There is lack of nerve supply to the joint. So, joint may be damaged, inflamed, and may be deformed. There is a charcoal joint due to lack of nerve supply. Maybe due to neurosyphilis, maybe due to diabetes or any other chronic condition like spina bifida, okay, that may lead to lead to charcoal joint. Paroxysmal lightning pains in abdomen and legs. Autonomic dysfunction, there may be retention of urine and also there may be soiling because of non-function of the anal sphincter, this is possible. Absence of deep tendon reflexes like the knee reflex or the ankle reflex and Argyll Robertson people, light reflex is lost but accommodation reflex is okay. In Tevis dorsalis, organisms are not demonstrated in the lesion. In this condition, you will not get the organism in most cases. So this is the test of neurosyphilis like Argyll Robertson people, if you put light on the eye, people should be constricted, okay. Here people is not constricted, so no light reflex but accommodation reflex. If you people like to read something very close, he will have accommodation of the lens by the action of the ciliary muscle. Here in the patient with neurosyphilis, people do constrict on a near object their accommodation reflex is okay, light reflex is lost and charcoal joint may affect the weight bearing joint. These are the ankle joint here and here is the subtalar joint, okay. So these are also affected, also knee joint may be affected depending on the type of injury and person's habit of walking. So this may be damaged, the subtalar joint, the ankle joint. The knee joint may also be affected. Okay, we'll go to the benign tertiary syphilis. Okay, this is almost from the museum picture here. We may have gamma formation, this swelling, nodular swelling, and that may damage the skull bone, what we have seen previously. And the nose may disappear totally, and even the hard palate, soft palate may be damaged will have the chronic ulcer that may be sloughing out of tissue. So we are now inside the nasal cavity through the through the heart palate. This is the, this is the soft palate that may also be damaged in benign tertiary syphilis by syphilitic gamma. Here these are the syphilitic gamma. These are the in chronic inflammatory mass okay and without any cagation will get lymphocyte plasma cells here, okay. So benign tertiary syphilis characterized by gamma of the bone, it may be the tibia fibula, skin, liver, mucous membrane of the mouth and the upper respiratory tract. Gammas are chronic inflammatory nodular mass or destructive ulcer of the mouth, okay. Gamma are 
are chronic inflammatory nodular mass or the distal leash ulcers of the mouth and upper respiratory tract. In the mouth, they may not make a nodule rather than they make a non-healing ulcer, possibly linked to the hypersensitivity to tibetum or pelitum. May cause bone pain, tenderness, pathological fracture, and fibrotic changes in life. That may happen in case of tertiary syphilis. So, what are the laboratory tests? We'll do lumbar puncture, we'll draw the cerebrospinal fluid and look cerebrospinal fluid for BDRL. There is Veneral Disease Research Laboratory and FTA ABS test. This is more specific than that of this, maybe a little costlier. There is fluorescence trypanoma antibody absorb test. So we, this patient also need periodic repetition of the laboratory test to find out how much he improved by medication or treatment. We have to remember that tertiary syphilis may not manifest by from the first for the primary syphilis, may, it may take 10, 20, 30 years to manifest as tertiary syphilis. So, a gap between the first from the primary syphilis, secondary, and the tertiary syphilis may be huge. Okay, we need periodic repetition of this test to find out is there any type of syphilitic sign is present in that person. Treatment procaine penicillin along with provenacide. The doses should be determined by the practicing physician. If the person is allergic to procaine, he can get the doxycycline to penicillin. Allergic patient, he may use the doxycycline. He or she. Okay. So, that's all about the tertiary syphilis. And the manifestation of tertiary syphilis, neurosyphilis, and the argillovarsin people. What is that? We have gone through that part. So, this will cover everything from tertiary syphilis. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me and please support my channel. Please subscribe me. Have a nice day. Bye now.